All right, we are in NA10. I asked the AA builder to create a form with fields for email, company and role, build an automation that processes form submissions, enrich with company data from their website, uses AI to qualify the lead and sends the data to Google Sheets. For high score leads, it should also schedule a 15 minutes call in a free slot in my calendar and send a confirmation email to both me and the lead. Now it mapped the whole thing out. On the right, there is a setup checklist that shows what's left, like connecting Google Sheets, Calendar, and Gmail, and clear steps on how to use the workflow. So the nodes are already wired. The form trigger has email, company name, and role as required. There is a configuration node with tweakable variables, right? We have lead score threshold at 70. We have meeting duration at 15 minutes, etc. Next, an HTTP request pulls company website data. The prepare data step cleans it up for the AI and the AI lead qualifier is the core, the core of this workflow. The prompt here asks it to evaluate company size, role fit, budget signals and return a score out of 100. It's using OpenAI's GPT 4.1 Mini with a structured output parser, so we get consistent fields like score, reasoning, industry, and company size. Below that, the Google Sheets node is mapped to capture both the raw lead and the AI analysis. And if node checks the score against our 70 threshold. Now, if the lead passes, the workflow finds an open slot in the next seven days, creates the calendar event, and emails both sides with details plus the AI's reasoning. All right, what I just saw was Anytan's native AI conversational workflow builder. The idea is simple. You describe what you want in plain English, and it puts together the workflow, picking nodes, wiring them up, setting variables, even drafting your AI prompts. I think it's really good to cut build time, especially for first drafts or you know quick prototypes but you still need to know what's happening under the hood just like you wouldn't ship a template straight to production right you should review what the AI generated understand the choices and be ready to tweak or fix them so in this video i want to battle test this feature and see how good it is for real life workflow builds quick note on availability if you open any 10 and don't see this AI builder that's normal it's rolling out gradually for any 10 cloud users so if you're self-hosted you will not have it okay if you're on cloud and still don't see it there is a workaround so later Later in this video, I'll show you how to enable this feature if you don't have it in your any 10 workspace yet. Here's the plan for today. We'll run three tests, a vague prompt to test how it handles ambiguity, then a precise prompt with strict requirements and a more complex multi-step system. And by the end, we should have a clear picture of what this conversational builder does well, where it falls short and how to use it to build faster without giving up control. Let's jump right in. now. First test, a super loose prompt. It's gonna be create an AI agent that researches AI news every morning and emails me a newsletter. And it ends, AI builder starts thinking it through. It pulls from docs and available nodes and wires a draft together. You can watch it drop nodes, you can watch it connect them and line up variables so data flows cleanly. When it's done, we get a setup guide on the right, what to configure and how to turn it on for production. Now let's see what it actually built. It kicks off with a scheduled trigger set to 8 a.m daily, which is quite reasonable interpretation of every morning, 8 a.m., right? Next is a workflow configuration node with two variables. We have a placeholder for the recipient email and a pre-filled news API URL. It's already filtering for artificial intelligence, sorting by publish date, and English only. Well, I would say it's solid default. Now, the core is the AI news research agent. The system prompt defines the role as AI news researcher and newsletter writer. It lays out the job. It says, find the latest AI stories, summarize the important bits, and produce a clean HTML newsletter with a subject line, intro, and three to five top stories with links then send it. Then the tools that this AI agent has actually make sense to me. We have OpenAI chat model set to GPT-40 mini, which is good balance of speed and costs for this task. Then the search AI news node, which is basically an HTTP request tool. It pulls the news URL from the previous node, the workflow configuration node, and we need to paste our API key here to make it work. Then memory, memory is empty, which makes sense for a daily one shot and a Gmail tool to send the newsletter. Subject and body use this expression from AI, so the agent generates them dynamically before sending. Overall, not bad for a vague ask, right? We didn't specify 
like nothing. These the skeletons there, you can see the nodes are correct. You only need to drop in credentials and tweak the copy if you want a different tone or format. On the plus side, it's read every morning as 8 a.m., which is good. It sets sensible configuration variables. It drafted a clear system prompt for uh, the agent and wired in a news API endpoint filtered to AA topics, right? So the tool stack is reasonable. Some gaps that I can see here are that you'll need your own news API key. Uh, it is not handled here at all. There is no error handling if the API fails or, you know, returns nothing. And the HTTP request tool doesn't have a description. So the agent may not know exactly when or how to call it. But overall, for a super vague prompt like this, this is a solid foundation. Just drop in your email, add the API key, connect Gmail, and you're likely up and running. Much faster than building from scratch, that's for sure. Just, you know, remember the AA Builder gets you 70 to 80% there. You still need to understand the flow and tighten the details before you actually activate your workflow and go live. All right, now let's do the second test. I'm gonna tell it exactly what to do. My prompt here will be run at 8 a.m. Use Tavily plus perplexity to find the top five AI slash tech stories. Best results to open AI to write an HTML email with the title, today's AI newsletter, subheaders per story, bold key insights, two, three sentence summaries, and a sources section at the end, sent via Gmail. While it builds, it's clearly mapping nodes to the schema. Let's just check out the result. So the scheduled trigger is set to 8 a.m. Workflow configuration has the Tavoli API URL and a recipient email placeholder, quite straightforward. Then it forks into two parallel research paths. We have Tavoli and Perplexity. So both calls run at the same time. Nice for latency, I'd say. Let's open up the Tavoli node. If you don't know, Tavoli is a tool which can do the web search based on your API call. So HTTP post request with a pre-filled body, querying top five trending AI and artificial intelligence news stories today. AI and artificial intelligence, like AI and AI. Maybe that makes sense for keywords, for search keywords, but definitely doesn't hurt, I'd say. so. It's okay. Advanced depth, limit five, that matches the prompt. Minor gripe here, it assumes that credentials are pre-configured. I think it would be better if it supported an API key in headers, but again, not a big deal. And also the query is hard-coded, so you'll get the same search string every day. I'd swap that for a dynamic query that includes today's date. Okay, now the perplexity node. It uses the native node with the Sonar Pro model, which is a very good model for web search. The prompt asks for the top five trending tech stories with titles, summaries, and source URLs. So it basically covers tech while Tavily covers AI, exactly the split we asked for in our prompt. All right, the results merge through a single node. Again, there is no error handling. So if one API fails or returns empty, the flow just falls over. We didn't ask for validation, but I'd still add basic guards here. And let's check the OpenAI step. So despite the prompt requesting GPT-5 as a model, it selected GPT-4.0. So that's a mismatch. The prompt itself is strong. You are an expert newsletter writer. Then a clear spec like H1 title, today's a newsletter, H2 per story, strong for key points, two, three sentence summaries, sources section and explicit tags, h1, h2, strong, pa. Okay, it passes research data via JSON stringify, which is the right shape, the right format. My only concern is that we are trusting the model to generate full HTML from scratch. For production, I would never do that. I'd use a fixed template and let the model fill uh, content blocks, okay? And the last node here is Gmail. It pulls the recipient from config, from our configuration node, and sets a dynamic subject like today's AI and tech newsletter and the date. Clean touch, it sends the HTML from the OpenAI node. Overall, this is much closer to our ideal, you know, prompt in, workflow out, parallel research, clear formatting instructions, sensible wiring, I'd say. Of course, to ship it, like to make it go live, I'd fix a few things. First of all, fix the model mismatch. Second of all, I'd make Tavilis query dynamic plus it would support header authorization. I would also add error handling and empty results check, and I'd move to a templatized HTML email for consistency. All right, time to test. So I wired up all the connections, added the Tavoli API key here via header authorization. I set the model to GPT-5 and dropped in the sending address, uh, which is my Gmail. Let's actually run it. So I got instant error. This is why you don't ship straight from the AA builder. The log says problem in node 
send newsletter via Gmail. Here we have this get node parameter trim is not a function on item zero. So in Gmail node, this message field is using JSON message. Well, the open AI node returns an object, not a string. To fix it, we just need to drag and drop it from open AI node. And now it's gonna be JSON message content. So Gmail receives a string and now it can use it. Okay, let's say run again, no errors. Let's do it again. All right, this time the execution is successful, but there is another issue. The merge node isn't actually merging. We are processing like two items, one from perplexity and one from Tavili. So we will send two emails and this is not what we want. We want one combined newsletter, right? Let me check the inbox. Yep, there are two separate emails. Email number one, this is a short summary, lighter than we'd want for a newsletter, but it does include working source links, which is good. Email number two, this one is from perplexity. Same story, brief output, references included, links work. Okay, so overall the workflow works after our Gmail fix, but we still need to properly merge results into a single payload before formatting and sending. Let's see if the AA Builder can clean this up. I went back to the chat and I told it exactly what broke. The data isn't merged. We are getting two newsletters, one from Tavili and one from Perplexity. Merge the research and have the agent write a single newsletter from both. Also make each section two to four or sentences with inline citations and a sources list at the bottom so we can trace sentences to exact articles. It thinks for a bit and updates the flow. Now it's done. I like that here on the right you can see the changes made, right? So number one, combine research results node. It changed from append to combine all mode and this merges both Tavili and Perplexity results into a single. This is what we wanted. OpenAI GPT-4 node updated the prompt to explicitly reference both Tavili and Perplexity data sources, select top five stories from all combined research, include two four sentences per story, and add a sources section at the bottom with numbered references, what we asked for. And Gmail node fixed the message fields to correctly reference the OpenAI response content. Really cool. The output looks right, one item from combined node, which means a single OpenAI pass and one Gmail send. Inbox, if I go to Gmail, it confirms it. I have only one email this time. Let's open it up. This version pulls in both Tavili and Perplexity. Still a little concise, right? But better. Sources are listed at the bottom and the inline citations are in place, pointing each claim back to a specific article. That's exactly the behavior we asked for. As expected with AI, being specific always pays off. The AI Builder gets you most of the way there, but it's still on you to verify and test everything before shipping. And let's run one more test. Let's see how it handles real complexity. So I asked for a multi-agent setup I can chat with on Telegram, one orchestrator plus sub-agents. Sub-agents for Gmail, Calendar and ClickUp with memory, a think tool for reasoning and everything running on GPT-4.0. All right, on the first iteration, the layout looks Fine, there is a Telegram trigger feeding a main agent as it should. Memory is keyed to the Telegram user ID, also a good choice. Then the Think tool is attached here as well. And there are three sub-agents, Gmail, Calendar, and ClickUp, each pointed at GPT-4.0. So visually, it's the right ballpark. Now, the main agent prompt is solid. Act as a personal assistant, delegate to the right sub-agent, use the Think tool to reason through complex asks. Okay, that part is clear. Where it breaks, I think, is the detail. So let's see, each sub-agent only has one generic tool. Gmail gets a single Gmail tool. There are no separate actions for send, draft, you know, label, delete, mark as read. So I think this is good for like very basic demo, like a draft, but to make it like really production ready, there is no way. You will still have to, to work a lot on it. Calendar also gets only one Google Calendar tool. So there is no distinct actions for, you know, create, update, delete, etc. ClickUp is the same story, one tool and many missing actions. Okay, also, by the way, the calendar tool requires a specific calendar, but here it's blank, so it wouldn't run at all. The sub-agents pull parameters via this expression from AI, which is the right pattern, but the handoff isn't well defined here. And there is no final message back to Telegram. So even if everything executed, the user wouldn't see a response. So this is something I would add as well. So I will not be diving deeper into this. I will not be fixing this whole workflow. 
my conclusion is, as I said, the AI builder can sketch the, the architecture for a multi-agent system, but it struggles with the wiring, you know, tool, like granularity, parameter passing, and uh, overall end-to-end -end response handling. To make this production ready, you'd have to, like, first of all, add explicit tools per action. For example, Gmail would have send, draft, label, delete, mark as read, and all of those should be as separate tools. Second of all, configure required fields like the target calendar, define a clean contract between orchestrator and sub-agents, I mean input outputs, and you know, finish with the telegram send because the user needs to understand what's going on. So this step would send the user a reply. And still, even then you would have to battle test it a lot because when you give all the control to those sub-agents, it's not as reliable as if you build the whole workflow with a separate nodes. All right, now the thing that I promised you in the beginning, if you don't see this feature in your instance, in your workspace, here's how you can enable it. Open a workflow, then right click, click inspect, then go to console and paste the feature flag override. I've put it in the video description, hit enter and then refresh. And also make sure you are on the latest build of any 10. Now, here's how I see it. AA Builder works great when the workflow is pretty linear step one step two step three where you know everything moves in a straight line but once you start asking for more agentic setups with multiple models you know making decisions and calling different tools that's where you still need to know how things fit together you'll end up building part of that logic yourself anyway at least as of today and honestly that's the right expectation for any AA tool today it's not meant to do everything for you if it gets you like around 70 percent of the way and saves about 70 percent of the time that's already a big win you get a decent skeleton nodes connected prompts drafted something that actually runs way faster than starting from from zero from scratch and the key is as i said many times today you need to actually understand what it built run it read the errors trace how the data moves and fix what's off the better you understand any 10 apis and general data flow patterns the faster you'll be able to debug and harden the workflow so yeah use the a builder to move faster and learn faster just don't skip the fundamentals don't ship the first draft, test it, understand it, and make it better. That's it for today. If this was helpful, a like really helps the channel. And if you want more on NA10 and AI automations, all the links are in the video description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.